Pursuing a project to its completion is not something Indian politicians are known for. Once the fanfare for announcing a mega project is over, very few of those projects actually see the light of the day. And the ones that do aren't actually executed as they were planned to. And that's why the story in Gujarat is so different. Both of Narendra Modi's promises of providing 24 by 7 electricity and creating an agricultural miracle are indicative of what leaders can do when they set their mind to it. Hello and welcome to the Ministers of Change. I'm Shireen Bhan. This week we travel through Gujarat from the cities to the suburbs and tell you how Narendra Modi has electrified this industrial state. We find out how Gujarat has managed to become a power surplus state. Biggest challenge was cutting down dignity losses. And it was only because of the political will that we have cut down losses ranging from around 40% to around 20%. What's the real story behind Gujarat's agricultural revolution? All those farmers in the first year of adoption of uh, technologies, they have been able to more than double their yield. And we talk to the farmers of Gujarat to find out just how much of the change is real and what more needs to be done. The Munafa we take, we take the Munafa today, we take the intermediaries. We need to have a government proper control on the In 2001, like most electricity boards in the country, the Gujarat State Electricity Board was bankrupt. Losses were mounting and in a state that places a premium on industrialization, erratic supply and load shedding were an embarrassment. The only way out was reforms. But power has traditionally been a political tinderbox. Elections are won on the promise of free power to farmers and lower tariffs to industry. But few regimes have managed to sustainably deliver on this promise. In 2001, in Gujarat, Narendra Modi's call was to institutionalize reforms, even politically sensitive ones. The scheme was called Jyoti Gram Yojana, and 10 years down the line, it's brought 24 by 7 electricity for domestic and industrial consumption in 18,000 villages in Gujarat and created a dedicated 8 hour power window for farmers. This is the only state which doesn't give free power. When he takes a decision, and he t keeps the person down below on his mind and then take a decision. And he has the courage to take the toughest of tough decisions. If he knows that that is going to be beneficial to the common man in the long run. Studies show that agriculture nationally consumes 85% of a state's power supply. Most of this is subsidized and scant attention to monitoring translates to diversion for users other than agriculture. So crucial to the reforms in Gujarat was the idea of a dedicated power line for farmers. 1,115 crore rupees was invested to lay down over 31,000 kilometers of parallel feeder lines and over 6,000 transformer centers were set up in less than 30 months. We decided that we want to give quality power, so we had so many substations. Today, in the state of Gujarat, in one single year, we give around 140 new 66 kV substations, which is one point of time, every 10 to 15 were given per year. So because of substations, the farmers started getting quality power. We had less of line deceptions so the consumers were satisfied secondly we saw to it that we did not raise the tariff simultaneously 11.8 lakh metal meter boxes were installed for the prevention of power theft and in the last few years over 15 lakh illegal connections have been sealed and close to 20 crore rupees recovered by way of fines what are called TND losses, which is a losses of transmission and distribution, but in fact are theft and the quality losses in Gujarat have substantially reduced. The, I remember once walking into a chemist shop in the middle of the day, I 
think it was in Baroda and that there was no light. So I said, kya bijli chali gai hai? And I realized, nahi, he had turned off the electricity. Why? Because he was saving electricity. Earlier, this fellow was stealing electricity. In Sakra village, an hour from Savli in Baroda district, Kanubhai Patel, who runs a milk collection center, has been able to digitize all processes. Our computer is here, and the light is here, and we have to work on it. In the same village, Preeti Patel, who's been running this pharmacy for 22 years, can finally stock some basic vaccines and injections. For 10 rupees for injection, the people of the village go to Baroda Chani, and go to 20-25 rupees. It's saved from money, and it's saved from time and time. And for small industrial units like this one, 24 by 7 for small industrial units like this one, 24 by 7 uninterrupted power has meant an increase in productivity. सभी के काम कंप्लीट चलता है और ऑर्डर भी हम लोग दे सकते हैं जल्दी से और भी ज्यादा ऑर्डर हमको मिलता है इसका। In distant Kutch district near Mundra, a self-help group attached to this snack making unit has seen an increased participation by village women who start work at 4 a.m. before they get down to their household chores. चार बजे उठी पांच बजे उठी ना अपने बटन सीधू लाइट में जाके ध्यान जाए तो बटन दबाई तय आप लोग काम था। अरे हमें आखा दिवस में दस बीस रुपया नो काम करता था अबे हमें अंदाजे ऐसी न्यू सॉन या स्पास पहुंची जाएगी। And across the state in Kadana village in Dahod, in what is Gujarat's tribal heartland, Jyoti Gram has brought electricity to homes but not to its farmers. Line क्या चीज़ दीदी? बाकी कनेक्शन लगाई हुई नहीं है। गांव में 25 परसेंट आदमी के पास में बिजली है घर में मीटर। बाकी आदमी के पास नहीं While the state administration continues to add infrastructure in the last mile villages, Gujarat is one of the few power surplus states which sells its excess power. The state is also a pioneer as far as solar power is concerned. In two years, Gujarat will house the largest solar energy park in Asia with a power production capacity of 500 megawatts. This is being set up with an investment of around 8,000 crore rupees from companies like GMR, Tata Power, Lanco Infra and soft loans from the Asian Development Bank. Gujarat's electrification is closely linked to the turnaround of its agriculture sector. Farmers now get eight hours of uninterrupted power supply and the state government has also helped equip them with better irrigation and production techniques. All of this has resulted in Gujarat's green revolution, which means its agri-sector has grown at 9.6% for the past seven years. That's much higher than the national average of just 2.7%. Gujarat has become a case study of sorts because it has been able to achieve this impressive growth in spite of being drought-prone, with 70% of its area classified as semi-arid and arid. While the Sardar Sarovar Dam on the Narmada has brought only limited benefits, since its canal network is still largely incomplete, it is the most rudimentary measure of building over 10,000 check dams, village tanks and bori buns that has gone a long way in augmenting water supply and recharging the groundwater table across the state. <laughs> ये ऊपर ये मॉनसून का बारिश गिरता था, उसके आधार पे खेती चलती थी। One of the key innovations I saw in the agricultural world was the concept of a krishi mahastav. So fairs organised by government of Gujarat for the farmers and not just the biggest farmers, but actually more the minimally wage farmers, the lower income farmers, in fact, coming together with the markets. One of the key features has been how can you ensure the right skills and the right technology are giving the right demand. So the demand and the supply has come together. And one of the new technologies that have yielded extraordinary results is BT Cotton. Balubhai of Davad village in Baroda district adopted BT Cotton eight years ago and today he links it directly to his prosperity. Not only has his yield per acre doubled, a sharp drop in the use of pesticides and labour has meant his earnings have spiked. ये बोलगा डालने से हमारे पास ट्रैक्टर है, दो ट्रैक्टर है, हमारे पास कार है, दो बाइक है और हमारे जमीन भी लिया है, 
पंद्रह एकड़ जमीन भी खरीदा है और दो कुआ भी बनवाए हैं ये ट्रिप का काम भी किया है यहाँ पे एक कुएं पे The success story of BT Cotton Farmers has made the state the top producer of cotton in the country. Better crop yields have given a fillip to associated industries in the state and transformed India from an importer of cotton in the last decade to the second largest exporter of cotton globally. Directly impact life of 5 million small and marginal farmers, those who do not have direct access to all the technology which is available in the developed world and in in in, in continuation of that and uh, we started working with an ngo we have launched a project called share where we are working with an ngo called isap uh, we are working with 10000 direct farmers we are hand holding them uh, and our experience is that all those farmers in the first year of adoption of uh, technologies they have been able to more than double their yield but the bt cotton story is not without its share of controversy While the use of genetically modified seeds is the focal point of a larger debate globally, the beginning of BT cotton in Gujarat was controversial as well. In 2000, two years before regulatory authorities cleared the use of these genetically modified seeds for cultivation, they were illegally leaked into the market. Now in four districts, BT cotton crop has developed a resistance to certain diseases, but this is in putting off farmers at least not yet. अमेरिका है मान लो कि अपना इसराइल है तो वहाँ जो टेक्नोलॉजी जो चलता है यहाँ आने में 10, 11, 12 बारह साल लग सकता है समझ लो तो ये ये जो अपने गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसी में थोड़ा जल्दी आ हुए तो यहाँ का जो खेड़ूत है उसकी उन्नति और बढ़ सकती है And one such technology pioneered in the semi-arid fields of Israel that has ushered in a second green revolution of sorts in Gujarat is drip irrigation. Realizing the need to conserve water as a scarce resource in most parts of the state, the government established the Gujarat Green Revolution Company in 2005 to educate farmers about the benefits of micro irrigation. GGRC is the nodal agency that organizes subsidies, brings in private partners and monitors the distribution of these systems. The MIS supplier has to provide maintenance for a year and provide uh, agronomical services. Now this agronomical services is how to run the system, how much water to give, how how much fertilizer to use, which fertilizer to use. if any cropping pattern has to be changed suggest which crops they should, the farmer should grow these are the various agronomical services provided it's a compulsory thing and it's a paid service the farmer pays for the agronomic service which is inbuilt in the scheme creating a pool of suppliers who compete with each other for business and are monitored rigorously by GGRC has benefited farmers like Gopal Patel who recently upgraded to a luxurious advanced system not covered by subsidies but Gopal shares the lament of farmers across the country that of unfair market economics in spite of Gujarat being one of the few states that allows farmers to sell their output directly to private buyers के ऊपर गवर्नमेंट का कोई प्रॉपर कंट्रोल होना चाहिए कि भाई तुमने जो परचेज किया है उसके ऊपर तुम ट्रांसपोर्टेशन और लेबर पाँच या दस परसेंट से ले सकते हो ये मोर देन डबल हमारी जो कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन है उससे भी डबल जो मुनाफा हम नहीं लेते वो मुनाफा आज वो इंटरमीडियट ले लेते हम सारी साल में जो लेते हैं वो एक घंटे में वो लोग ले लेते हैं Coming up next on the Ministers of Change, we travel to Gujarat's tribal districts to see what the government is doing to bring them under the development net. Look at the state as a whole, the tribal population, the poverty rates, you know, and things like that. 
uh, you would like him to do a little more on that front. So governance is not simply, you know, chatting with the uh, well-to-do and the high and mighty. Governance also is to do with the poor people. Gujarat's tribal pocket concentrated in its southeastern belt makes up 15% of the state's population. Like in other states, Gujarat's tribes are largely dependent on traditional farm income, collection of forest produce, maintaining livestock and migration to urban areas for wage labor during the lean season. Recent studies indicate that nearly 30% of Gujarat's tribal population temporarily migrates every year and the tribal talukas in the state routinely find themselves in the list of the most backward regions in the state. These are communities which are traditionally beyond the pale of BJP Jansang politics. These are communities which have not been the gainers of these developments and investments and so on. And these are communities which are not that invested in Hindutva or Gujarati Asmita. So these are, this is potentially a social cleavage waiting to be activated. Modi is as astute a politician as they come, even if he is unconventional in the way he delivers his politics. Good governance has two components. One is administration and the other is politics. Mr. Chandrababu Naidu also liked to fashion himself as a CEO. But somewhere his politics was a little deficient, which is why he got voted out. Mr. Narendra Modi on the other hand, uh, takes his politics hand in hand with governance and administration. He goes among the people, he undertakes yatras, he finds out what is the real condition and takes measures to solve them. In 2007, when the Gujarat Tribal Development Corporation announced the Chief Minister's 10-point agenda, the priority was clear. The Narendra Modi government set aside 15,000 crore rupees under the Van Bandhu Kalyan Yojana for tribal development. Their plan was to involve the private sector to move tribal income up by 100% over the next five years. Tribal areas, farmers uh, actually were having very poor yield of maize crop. But what we did, uh, we went to the state government and said there are certain interventions which can be done with the help of government to improve their income. So what we did, we, we selected area, we conducted demonstrations, the uh, state got interested, then we got NGOs involved. State Agricultural Universities got involved, Monsanto got involved, so it was a really a real partnership. The use of hybrid seeds, fertilizers and community irrigation via check dams has yielded the necessary results and Monsanto's project Sunshine, which began as a pilot project with 30,000 farmers in Dahod and Panchmahal districts, has now been extended to other districts as well. It was a good learning curve, but people really responded. Today, we, in fact, this season we introduced potato cultivation in tribal area, where the non-tribals were already into potato cultivation, but tribals were not doing this thing because of the huge investment required. And we put the Dativada Agricultural University to do the impact assessment. And the report is an eye-opener. They, they are now pu pushing us that this whole area can become potato cultivation hub. <laughs> A notable feature has been the emphasis on delivering results and making tangible impact in five years. The way the dairy development program is managed is an illustrative example. The MOU between the government and the dairy cooperative has a clause that in case the dairy fails to provide a pre-decided return on investment, it will have to pay 2% penalty on the total project cost. Conversely, if they achieve the projected figures, they will be entitled to 2% incentive on the project cost. Thus, the financial stake of the partner is built into the success of the project. And the Chief Minister's 10-point program doesn't stop at sustainable livelihood. Roads have been built to provide connectivity. Safe drinking water delivered at community water taps. 
mati beru lagi. Tuh pasti ya nelayan ni sudah. Tahan nak megah berta berta, ek kelak mau betul kampu berjus. Unlike all services in Gujarat, it's a paid for service with women's health help groups put in charge of collecting water user charges. I have 50 pesos for this rupiah. I have to pay for this rupiah. I have to pay for this rupiah. I have to pay for this rupiah. Located in Daho district, this model school is one of the 11 schools across Gujarat's tribal district hoping to correct the low level of literacy within this region. The central government-sponsored program of Eklavya model residential schools was adopted with the idea of providing good quality education to tribal children who often have to drop out of school as their parents migrate in search of jobs. I like my school very much because I, because I get Full facilities here, um, library, computer lab, which everything I provide here. The government should start the, the uh, schools from KG level. One or two in a trial basis, the school should be uh, started, and then uh, gradually, what uh, what is the result? Then then uh, there will be implementation. So. If the people of that, uh, those who are working at uh, and in a seasonably, they go from one place to another, and they are coming for farming uh, at the uh, in the monsoon only. So they are carrying their children with them at the time. So they should keep their children in those schools. So this year we want to go for a very intense and in-depth evaluation of the program. We'll try to find out what worked, what did not work, what we could be able to achieve, what we could not achieve, and it will be very. In fact, the process where we'll go for very intense self-criticism. And based on this, we'll again plan something for the next five years. It is this approach of setting targets and then strict scrutiny that seems to be working for Gujarat. It also helps that you have a leader who likes to get involved with every project and gives you the political support and back. Next week on the Ministers of Change, we focus on how Gujarat is turning around its health and education sectors. But for now, that's a wrap on this episode of the Ministers of Change from the entire team. Goodbye and thanks for watching.